What's up everybody? Welcome back to Ian's Life. Today, we're taking all of these and getting them in there. Stay tuned. So I've been waiting a while to get all of my avionics into the airplane because I didn't have everything I needed, but we do now when we get installed. Starting here, this is a Dynon D180. I got this second hand. Uh, I'd been waiting a while to look for a good second hand EFIS that I could use, and this one's perfect because it does artificial horizon, altitude, airspeed, everything I need, but it also does engine instrumentation. So this is an ideal installation. This guy, is an iFly 7-inch GPS touchscreen. I am going to see if I can get this guy permanently installed. I'm mildly concerned about panel space. It's a fair-sized piece of stuff. I mean, it, despite being much thinner, it's basically the same size as our EFIS. And then finally, over here, I've got my Becker comm radio. Uh, I managed to get this secondhand a while back. So what do we need to do? Well, first things first, I think we're actually going to get the seat mounted for real. Uh, I've been using temporary mounts this entire time, uh, and that's why it's just loose in here as we've been taking it in and out. But I'm about to be getting in and out of the airplane a whole bunch to determine exactly where things are mounted, which means that it really is time for me to get this seat in the airplane for real. So let's get into that. seat mounted I hopped in for a minute and I can now see a general idea of what I want to do. Now taking a look at the cockpit area here we always knew that the EFIS was going to sit up here that was always the plan so main flight instrument is going to be on top of this pillar right in this area here. That's the easy part. Uh, now what's more challenging is everything else. I think I've made the decision our radio let me just grab that actually A radio is going to go in between here, kind of like so. Uh, if I get the exact details, but this is ironically almost exactly the right width to hide this guy. So we'll go ahead and make provisions for a panel for him there. Our little iFly here is going to mount, I think probably just on a ball mount or something up here in front of the throttle. Uh, that'll be convenient, it'll be easy to see. I'll kind of angle it something like, uh, like so. We'll get the exact details of this, but this is effectively gonna be a removable item. It was designed to be anyway, so conveniently we'll just use it that way and put some form of ram arm or something here. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, this panel is where our throttle and flap handles will be going. Currently the flap's up here, but it's kind of inaccessible at the moment. I didn't like that originally. So we're gonna be moving the flap handle over into this console. So I think we've got two items to attack. The console needs to get things, and we may also work on the throttle and flap mounting uh, because they are going to figure into placement of switch panels and everything else. Uh, so that's gotta happen at some point. And we've got to start working on the closeout for this bottom and panel here. Uh, the actual mount for the EFIS is the last thing I'm going to do. That'll mount up top. So I'm going to work my way up to there. And I think that's where we're going to start things today is in this compartment here. there's our first piece installed. I did this my normal way of doing things. I started out with a cardboard template, folded that up, adjusted it as necessary, and got it uh, drilled, folded, and installed. I also um, uh, sanded it down before I bent it, just because it's a little easier to do surface fishing on flat pieces. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit, 
this uh, is going to work pretty well right here. Uh, next, I've got to deal with the front piece that goes here, which is going to be a little more complicated just because of the additional bends here. And it's also going to establish the exact width and all this because these bends, while they are in there, can be tweaked right now. But they won't be once this is locked down. So uh, let's go back to the cardboard and uh, do this over again. Okay, so this should make a lot more sense now. We've got our bottom section in here, and we have put our upper section in between these two. Uh, this is now a lot sturdier. I shouldn't wiggle it up there. I should actually try to wiggle it there, and you can see I'm moving the whole airplane with that. So much sturdier, and we'll also put a back on it, which will really stiffen this whole thing up. So the next thing we're going to do is going back to our little comm radio here. You can see I've already done a mark with a piece of tape here, and what that's for is to tell me where this is going to sit, because this is actually going to sit at an angle, like so, out of the panel, and uh, this will allow me to get a better view of the radio as I'm sitting in the airplane. So i got to bend up a piece of sheet metal to uh, mount that, and then we'll probably put some support in between these two just so that it doesn't want to fall in. But anyway, uh, I think it's looking pretty good, but it is time for me to call it a day, so I'm going to come back out tomorrow and get this radio piece done. So with the radio console done, it's time to mount the Dynon. Now, I've already started doing some work. Uh, I've got these marks here. You can see we're going to cut this across to where the whole thing sits at an angle and points up at the pilot, and the Dynon's going to go up there above the radio. I've already started making some pieces for that. This is the actual bracketry that holds the Dynon in place, um, and this is the piece of sheet metal that we're going to use to make our panel and mount the Dynon on. So what's going to happen with this That's going to go in there kind of like so. And uh, the wide angle makes it look a little silly, but uh, if I zoom out, that'll look a little better. Um, we're going to put some angle in that's going to come out and hold the bottom of this. Then I'm going to picture frame around it so that we can put a thin sheet metal cover on it that will be removable in case you need to access anything or do any wiring work back here. Uh, but for right now, I need to get some bracing and some angle onto this thing to make it stronger and mount everything up. So I'm going to get back to work on that. So small break to show you what I've accomplished here. Now things are really starting to come together. I've done a bunch of work on this upper section. Built a slightly stronger L bracket to hold things. We put uh, this uh, aluminum angle on the back side uh, over here to kind of picture frame the whole thing. Uh, we've got the actual radio support. This is a supplied radio, what am I saying? The uh, Dynon support. 
uh, which is a splied piece. We've got that all riveted together here. The dynon is actually in place where it is going to go. Now, obviously, we're not even close to done. I mean, for one, this whole thing is super floppy. So we need a lot more support back here. We also need a cover for everything. So I've got to build the planned sheet metal piece I had figured on making that's going to cover the whole thing. I might tie it in up here. I haven't decided yet. Uh, to be determined. Uh, either that or I'm going to strengthen this bottom section substantially so that it's not quite so wobbly. Either way, I'm really happy with how everything's looking. I really think this is really starting to look like a... Uh, complete cockpit. And as an added bonus, and this was kind of something I really wanted from the start, this sort of floats in space in the middle and it's pretty small. So you get a lot of sight line past it, which I was deliberate. I wanted that. Um, even the original panel was a lot bigger than this, but by relocating things elsewhere, by building this console and everything, we've now got everything else kind of away to where the visibility out of the front should be really good, which I'm going to be very happy with if I can keep that intact the whole way through and not have to cover it up with anything else. In any case, I'm going to take a brief break and then come back and finish off the sheet metal for the top and forward of this. Uh, we may also go ahead and get the radio in place. i got to actually cut a hole for that. So, brief pause and then back to work. Alright, so we got the radio in now. That is looking pretty good. I'm probably going to have to do a cosmetic faceplate. It's really difficult to do some of these things without actually CNC cutting the metal. Back when I used to do this professionally, I CNC'd everything. So we may have to build just kind of a cosmetic cover for this to clean up some ugly. But it is in. It is solid. Uh, I went ahead and did a support bracket. I may not even be able to... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to show it on camera. These two Clecos are holding... Uh, a little piece of metal underneath this so that there's some support for it as it tries to uh, pull down so it's not just hanging on that face plate up there. And that also establishes how far out this sticks and where our connectors are going to be. So now I know this connector, I know this connector, I can account for where the wiring is going to be and I can actually build some sheet metal to cover everything back here. So let's get on to that. out for the dynon is done that took a while that was quite a bit of work let me show you what we've done we built kind of a shell for this here and this is two pieces it's not going to be permanently riveted together as one this is effectively the glare shield which will be removable that'll screw on and off and it'll leave that lower section that we had earlier just sitting there with the dynon but this means that the panel is now rigid to the um, uh, to the front, it's no, the front no longer wants to wobble. That'll hold everything steady while it's installed. Uh, it'll keep the sun off the back of things. It just generally um, uh, protect everything. 
quite happy with how it came out. Uh, I am going to pull some tricks. I'm going to be a little vague and mysterious here. I've got some things I'm going to do to kind of cosmetically dress this up down the line. But for right now, this will do to mount everything in the airplane. So with that out of the way, we need to move on to our next task, and that's more sheet metal work. Uh, we've got some switch panels we need to install in a couple of spots. I'll be doing that here in a second. We've got our ignition key. I've got to install that. Um, but I think the next thing we're going to work on is this guy. Now, my father started this a little while back, and he got to a point where he just bent this single piece of metal. Uh, if I back off a little bit, you'll see this sort of mounts on the side of the airplane. Let me back off even further. Yeah, you can kind of see that mounts on the side of the airplane there and takes up a portion of the window. That side console is going to house the throttle, flap controls, and possibly some switches. And I'm thinking I may put the GPS at the front of it. But for us to do that, I need to get it firmed up a little bit, and I need to start placing stuff into it. All the stuff I mentioned earlier, throttle, flaps, etc., have to be actually in place so that I can figure out where everything else goes. As I place the most important thing, throttle, then flaps, those are the most important, then I can kind of determine where everything else fits around it. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work on that. So we have got a bunch of work done. This is going really well. We started out just getting this console a little more secured in here. I uh, built a little piece of metal back here just to tie this down to this cross brace. And I may add maybe some dimple dies or something to firm this up because it still has a little bit of flex in it. Not a, it's probably acceptable, but I may still work on it. Once I had that in place, and oh, and we added some more um, uh, rivet points or what will be rivets out here. Clico's right now. And we got the throttle in. So obviously this isn't hooked to anything. It's just throttle assembly. But it is in the console now where I want it, uh, which sets up our most critical point, which is where your hand falls for this. And after probably a solid week of work, I can finally call the sheet metal done. We've finished a lot of detail work here. Uh, I think last time I showed you this switch panel. Now we have this one, which this is going to be our avionics and lights switches. Uh, I've added this guy, which is just a little 12-volt um, port, cigarette lighter port. We've got our key switch here that's going to actually turn the airplane on and start the engine. Uh, of course, this we had done before, the Dynon, the radio console, and the center. But I've also added on a rear section here uh, because... This thing was super flexible beforehand because the back could just flex freely, but by boxing that whole thing in, it's now really stiff uh, and should be good to go. Obviously, everything is still in Clecos because we have to do a disassembly, uh, paint and whatever finishes I'm going to do on everything, and then I can put it all back together and rivet it. But that's for a different video. This task is done. It's time for us to move on to wiring before I do all my finished work, just in case I have to do any additional little adjustments. So I think that this task is done, and we're going to get on to the next one. And with that, our console structure is basically done. Now, I haven't actually pulled the final rivets, and we still have a lot of cosmetic work like paint, fabric, and other things to deal with. But on the plus side, most of the sheet metal's done, and we'll get on to that stuff soon. So stay tuned for that in another episode, and I'll see you next time.